in that water and then it's like a breeding site for these uh, microorganisms so this is serious health hazard with the tour now ended what is the way forward and it has what it has um, shown us is that um, there has to be greater collaboration between the various stakeholders it's not only works it's works with health with ndma with uh, Ministry, uh, Ministry of Regional Administration, because we've seen area plan, uh, issues of encroachment, we've seen issue of um, waste management, and it's just done. What has done is just exacerbated the the, the, the problem, and I think um, it is now basically teamwork. We all have to work together to make sure we fix these problems and fix them permanently and in a sustainable way. What we are saying now, we see. Um, with government and partners, how do we raise funds to address yes. these immediate needs okay. and the medium and long term? Because the report, the recommendations are divided into three. We have the short term, medium the medium and, and the long term. So we are now presently addressing the immediate needs, that is the short term, okay. and now from there we get to the uh, medium and then to the long term. Okay. Okay. This tour has confirmed the magnitude of damages in the disaster hotspots. A comprehensive report of the tour to be presented to the government by the governing council is expected to guide the government in providing lasting solutions to the crisis. Louis Mendy, GRTS. The next operation, Clean the Nation, or Sersatal, is slated for Saturday, 13th October 2012, throughout the country in observance of the International Coastal Cleanup Day. This cleanup day release states will start from Banjul Ferry Terminal to Okatong, Vara and Farafene. A news release from the National Environment Agency reminds governors, Sefolu, Alkalulu and councillors of the presidential directive urging them to organize and coordinate the national cleanup exercise in their localities. NEA solicits the cooperation and active participation of the general public, government and private institutions, AI Company, youth organizations, Gambia Transport Control Association and Tipa Garish at Paco the, the dispatch ends. Well, that announcement takes us to our first break. We'll be right back. Thousands of people in Mali have taken to the streets of the capital, Bamako, calling for military intervention by ECOWAS against Islamist occupiers in the north. The demonstrators, most of them women, are angered by the stringent restrictions being imposed on such a secular state. The international community, as we hear in this CFI report, is yet to make any decision. It was without a doubt the largest demonstration held in Bamako since northern Mali fell to the Islamist insurgency. Thousands of people marched through the capital to demand military intervention in the north. This is a message of unity, of reconciliation between the army and the people. A message from the silent majority who say yes to ECOWAS, yes to the international community. Many of the protesters were women, angered by the brutal restrictions imposed by the Islamists. These protesters called on the international community to end the repression. The international community should support us and take action to protect our freedom. We are a secular country. Liberate the North was chanted throughout the march. The Mujao took my land, but this morning I'm proud to say that Mali, from Kai to Lezonga, is one and indivisible in this march for freedom. This massive protest was held as the international community mulls over details of a military operation, how it is to be carried out and by whom. No decision has yet been taken. The wave of labor disputes that has recently been gripping South Africa is said to have serious economic implications for the rainbow nation. 
the strikes that started with South Africa's mining sector have subjected President Jacob Zuma to heavy criticism, while former ANT Youth League leader Julius Malema seems to be the hero in the wake of the industrial actions. South Africa has been hit by a wave of labor unrest for weeks now. Strikes began in the platinum mining sector, but then spread to transportation. Some mining companies have fired workers for taking part in illegal strikes. And mining company Amplatz laid off 12,000 employees. That's 40% of their workforce. Miners and the companies have not been able to reach an agreement on salary increases. The combined strikes have hit South Africa's economy hard, and analysts believe they could have a long-lasting impact. Collectively, those two make up a fifth of the South African economy, and the, 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 the knock-on drag that that's going to imply for South African GDP means that we're likely going to be seeing a huge uh, you know, revision downward in terms of South African growth for this year. The labor unrest has had political consequences as well. President Jacob Zuma's African National Congress has been criticized for letting the strikes spread. And many striking miners have lost confidence in their traditional unions. President Zuma sees all this, but he ignores it. Does he want us to die like the people in Americana before he acts? He has heard that we have been kicked out of the mine and have nowhere to go. What is he saying with all of this? The government's reputation has been tarnished for not reacting to the strikes. And the credit rating agency Moody's downgraded South African government bonds a notch last month, saying that poor governance could have long-term risk. The ANC was not only slow to respond to the strikes, but also brought some of the movement's leaders to court. The ANC's handling of the strikes has enabled the party's expelled rebel, Julius Malema, to come out looking like a hero. Malema, the former ANC Youth League president, toured mines and encouraged workers to strike for higher wages. A Syrian airplane en route from Russia, Moscow, was intercepted by and forced to land in Ankara, Turkey for some hours. While the aircraft was later released, the cargo it was carrying was seized. Damascus has accused Ankara of hostile behavior and demanded the return of the confiscated cargo. We have details of the latest diplomatic dogfight in this report by CFI. From Moscow, a Syrian airplane was intercepted by Turkish aircraft and forced to land in Ankara before being allowed to leave several hours later. The questionable cargo on board, the authorities said, was confiscated. There was material on that airplane which should have been declared, but wasn't. We will keep the cargo for examination. We will keep it also after examination. The aircraft left for Damascus at dawn Thursday with its 35 passengers, including 17 Russians. As soon as the plane arrived, the Syrian Transportation Ministry organized a press conference to denounce Turkey's conduct. They arrived with armed men, 10 armed men. They handcuffed us, they threw us on the floor, then they put us in two vehicles to take us away from the aircraft. Accusing Ankara of hostile behavior, Damascus demanded that Turkey return the cargo seized by Turkish authorities. Moscow followed immediately, demanding an explanation from Turkey for having put the passengers' lives in danger and violated diplomatic conventions. This is a new turn in the relations of tension that's escalating between the two countries as Bashar al-Assad's regime continues with its provocations and the Turkish army steps up its threats. So far, we have retaliated for each shelling incident, and if it continues, we will respond more strongly, warned Nejdet Özel, Turkey's top military commander. While Ankara and Damascus engage in a game of attack me if you dare, the Syrian population continues to pay for it. Those who are lucky enough to be only wounded are evacuated to Turkey through ways which could very well kill them. And before we end this edition of news, a reminder of our headlines. President Jame and the Australian High Commissioner to the Gambia have been discussing means of bolstering relations between Banjul and Canberra. 
The Supreme Court of the Gambia has rescheduled the appeal filed by Langtomong Tamba and six others convicted for treason. Thousands of protesters in Bamako are demanding military intervention by ECOWAS to flush out Islamic militias in northern Mali. And hostilities intensified between Damascus and Ankara as Turkey intercepted a Syrian airplane en route from Russia.